Hello again, everyone. It is the Black Knight, and as I'm recording this, and perhaps as you're watching this, it depends on how well the editing goes tonight and the uploading and the blah, 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 the DDD. -D -D. It might be a little late, but as I'm recording this, it is October 23rd, 2017, and for those of you who are into follow, you realize that is exactly 60 years before the bombs fell in the fictional Fallout universe, and I'm stressing fictional here so that no one starts to think, hey, wait a minute, we've got 60 years? I didn't know. No, this doesn't have anything related to reality. There's nothing magical about that date in the future. No different than the, than the Back to the Future date, which I, I'll put a link in the description. You can uh, see my video on that date when it came in past. But it occurred to me, actually, around the 9 o'clock hour, that that was, uh, that was the date, and that was the moment, and this was like, wow, it's like Fallout Day here. And, you know, perhaps it would be good to put up a Fallout video. And while this may seem a bit thrown together, it's actually a concept that I've been trying to bantering about here and trying to get across for a little while now. So now, now seems a good enough time to do that. What I'm going to talk about here is I'm going to talk about a little bit of headcanon. If, if you don't know what headcanon means, it roughly means stuff that you've put into a story from your own head. The way you interpret the story, the, the stuff you accept into your own head as far as, you know... Uh, for instance, let's say you're a really big Star Wars fan, but you hate the prequels, so you don't accept them as real. You say, oh, that really didn't really happen. I had my own story for that, my own you know, backstory about Darth Vader that was far better than any of that. So that's not part of your head canon. It's not part of the canon that you personally keep inside your head. And that's the beauty and the freedom of art in general. If, if Star Wars 8 comes out and it turns out like, you know, Luke goes crazy and starts chopping every all the good people up into bits, and you say, you know, I really can't include that in my Star Wars canon. You don't have to. But as far as the Fallout universe is concerned, I came up with this own little thing here. There's nothing really to justify it. But my thought was, what if the Chinese didn't nuke Alaska? What if they nuked everything else but? And I, I'm, I'm going to tell you why I think they would have done that is the nuclear war that, that happens, all right, you can, you can almost see it happening. Uh, the way it's described, you know, there's a war over resources. The resources are in Alaska. The Chinese invade Alaska. The, the U.S. invades Canada for some reason, uh, just because. I don't know why. I still don't get that. But the, uh, just so they could get to Alaska better, they could drive there. Has there ever been a problem driving through Canada? I don't understand what the story was. But they, they, invade, they invade Canada and to uh, retake Alaska. But to help retake Alaska, they invade China. So China has to divert resources to fight off the Americans in China. And then we, you know, the U.S. retakes Alaska, and they're, they're going deeper into China. And since they're facing defeat anyway, they figure, hey, why not just end the world with nuclear attacks? We'll attack. And, you know, that's the point where really it doesn't become believable. Because even if you're going to lose a war... It's much better just to surrender than to say, let's just unload everything with, you know, nuclear bombs for the most part. Unless you're facing nuclear stuff. You know, I guess it depends on how deep your philosophies are and how, how you know, if you're, if you're facing enslavement, okay, well, then it's better to end the world. But if you're looking at, you know, the Americans are coming and they're probably going to hook you up with, all right, you'll have to deal with taxes and capitalism. Um... You know, that might not be as bad a deal as a, as a nuclear war. But I don't think the Chinese in this game would have just, you know, saying, oh, the heck with it, we're going to shoot nuclear weapons. I think they had to have a better plan. So here's what I think they did. I think what they did was they pulled all their resources off of the defense lines, except a basic, a basic defense just to keep everybody busy. And they moved all their troops, as many as they could fit, into their stealth submarines. And they probably had a bunch of stealth submarines. That was kind of their, their deal there was stealth. So they break out their stealth submarines. And let me tell you something. Try to say stealth submarines a few times in a row. It's not easy. No, no, it's not. I'm imagining they had some big ones, you know, a, a bunch of them that could take, you know, five or six thousand troops. Figure a dozen of those. Maybe they've got some tanks, you know, strapped to the outside. Figure something really, you know, funky and sci-fi like that. Perhaps for the same troops that they evacuated from Alaska. It's moved up to other place. All right, you guys here, get into these submarines. Perhaps you get a whole bunch more troops on aircraft. Get ready for another invasion of Alaska. 
Then you get your government, your key people in government, the people who really know what's going on, the people really calling the shots. They all get together and they get into whatever bunker or aircraft or submarine of their own, and they get ready to move. They get their family together, they get their favorite stuff, they get all their stuff together, and they put that into whatever kind of vehicle they think is going to go through the next phase. Then, boom, China drops the bomb. Or actually, quite a lot of them. Now, after the dust settles, the Chinese launch a massive invasion of Alaska. And you can imagine how that might have gone. First of all, the people invading have nothing to go home to. They have no families. They have nowhere to go. The only place on the planet that hasn't been irradiated is Alaska. It's the best land there is now. It's their only hope. So they're going to be fighting with motivation. The Americans, and there should be a lot of American troops there in Power Arbor, are going to be equally motivated. If the Chinese win, they turn Alaska into New China. There might even be another Great Wall built out of the holes of these submarines. A population that for hundreds of years has all just descended from these original soldiers and that original government. If the Americans win, will they drive out the Chinese for the last time? And then you have a society that's built around the American victors, the American soldiers, and it's descended from that. And you have another, perhaps that's another source of the Enclave or a stronghold of the Enclave. Now, what will be intriguing for a future Fallout game is if they fought to a standstill, to a draw, if nobody won. And on one hand, you have... New China as part of Alaska with their Great Wall built out of the submarines. And on the other hand, you have old America that's still hanging in there. Whether they call themselves the Enclave, and you can make it an Enclave. There's a lot of arguments. You can make it an Enclave side of things. The Enclave versus the Chinese eternally battling each other. And perhaps after a while not battling each other, just coexisting in Alaska. So it's really gang. What's left? There's a whole bunch of different ways you could take this. If each side has access to some of the oil that's under that ground, they can keep this going quite a long time. And they can make it pretty nice. They have access to energy. They have access to creating stuff. They're going to be a little bit short on materials. And that's, you know, as far as steel is concerned, I would think. I don't, I don't know that there's a whole lot of, you know, steel mines. I'd have to look that up. Is there any, are there any, there's mining up in Alaska. So I suppose they could get, if they had access to materials, you could, it could be that Alaska is the last civilized place, you know, depending on your, uh, your definition of civilization. Let's say the last old world civilized place left in the world. The key to this theory is I don't think anyone wants to launch nuclear weapons just to be a spoil sport. They want to gain something. And, you know, unless they're in a position where they have absolutely nothing to lose. And the Chinese, in this situation, you can imagine if they were going to have a war over resources, that means theirs are exhausted and they're going to be looking at starvation at some point in the future. Even if you could grow all the food that you want, if you can't transport it, you're going to end up with starvation except for the farmers. And so that's uh, that's probably what they were facing, and so therefore they pressed ahead in desperation. And sometimes I wonder when, you know, we're importing as much oil as we can, and yet we're not pumping the oil that we have and using it. You know, gang, maybe we want to try and balance this so everybody runs out of oil at the same time, and we come up with solutions together, as opposed to putting people into situations where they're saying, you know what, you have oil, and I'm going to starve without it, so I'm going to have to shoot you. But that's going to require a lot more math than I have going to uh, figure out what the best path would be on that one. So, you know, I'm just I'm just making video game videos. So on this 60th pre-anniversary, would that would be would that be what this is called? On this 60th pre-anniversary, let's call it that. What do you think? What do you think about my theory about what happened to uh the last remnants of China. You think they all settled in Alaska? You think they tried and failed? Do you think uh, instead that the aliens caused the war or vault caused the war? There's a whole bunch of different uh, theories about this. And remember, this is all fiction. You don't have to worry about it coming into your life. It just is what it is. It's it's things to play around with. It's it's sci-fi. It's, it's gloomy sci-fi, but it's uh, still fiction. On that note... This is your Black Knight. Have a great night.